Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the leak code question, minimum number of days to eat and oranges. So this question comes from the weekly lead code contest. And this is from the question from August 16th challenge. And this is uh, the hardest question as you can see over here. Okay, so what is this question? So in this question, there are N oranges in the kitchen and you decided to eat some of these oranges every day as follows. So think of these as the rules. So we can either eat one orange, okay? If the number of remaining oranges is divisible by two, then we can eat n by two oranges. So that leaves us with n by two oranges. But, uh, and the third condition is if the number of remaining oranges n is divisible by three, then we can eat two into n by three oranges. So that leaves us with n by three oranges. And you can only choose one action per day. And we need to return the max minimum number of days to eat n oranges. Okay, so that makes sense. And uh, over here, they gave us a quick example, n equals 10, and we got an output of four. So instead of looking at this example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to visualize the question for us. And while visualizing it, we'll also understand how we can solve it. So let's take a quick look at that. Okay, so real quickly, I wrote down the rules over here. So we can either eat, so we can eat one apple. If it is divisible by two, uh, then we can eat n by two apples. And if it's divisible by three, we can eat two n by three. So in our uh, example question, we were given the value 10. So we're gonna start off with that in our uh, question as well. So we're gonna say, we're starting off with 10 oranges. So now how can, what can we do right now? So is uh, so we can eat one orange, so that's our first option. So when we eat one orange, we're left out with nine oranges. So we're gonna write that number over here. And I'm kind of gonna represent this in a tree and it should make a lot more sense as I keep going on. And what is the other option? Is this number 10 divisible by two? Well, it is, 10 is divisible by two. And in that case, what's gonna happen is we're gonna eat n by two oranges. So we're gonna end up eating five oranges. So that's the same as saying that we have five oranges left. So these are the one of two things we can do. We can either eat one or we can eat n by two in this case for the number 10. So now we're gonna keep doing this until we reach the value zero and we have no more oranges left. And if it still doesn't make sense, it should really soon. So now we have the number nine. So one thing we can do here, we can eat one of the oranges. So if you eat one of the oranges, uh, you will be left out with eight oranges. What is the other option? Is it divisible by two? It's not. But nine is divisible by three over here. So what we can do is we're gonna eat two n by three oranges. So just to clarify, two n by three, so in this case, the n value is nine. So two into nine by three, and that's nothing else but eight by three, which equals to six. So this number six, to be really clear, is the number of oranges, not apples, that we're eating. So we're eating six oranges. So how much are we left with? We're left with three oranges, nine minus six. And another way to do that is just by doing n by three. So this is gonna give us the number of oranges that we have left. Okay, cool. Now let's go to our five. So at five, what can we do? We can eat one orange and that's it. Five is not divisible by two, it's not divisible by three. I'm pretty sure you get the concept by now, so I'm just gonna go by a little bit faster. So now we have eight, so we can either eat one orange or we can eat uh, n by two oranges. Uh, then we have the number three, and over here we can eat uh, one orange, leaving us with two, or we can eat uh, two n by three oranges, leaving us with one. And for the number four, we can either eat one oranges, orange, leaving us with three, or we can eat n by two oranges, leaving us with two. And now we're gonna go down one last layer. So this is the final layer. And over here, we're actually gonna understand what the purpose of doing this is. So at seven, we have either have six or that's it. There's no other option at seven, so six. Uh, for four, again, we already found this, okay? So now I kind of want you to uh, recognize that we're making the same call again. We're doing the same thing for four again. We already repeated it once over here and we're doing the same call again. And if, you're, uh, if you recognize what this is, this is, we can solve this problem by using something called memoization. And what that does is once we make a call, we're going to store that value so we don't have to make the same recursive call each time. Okay, but that's for the code part, so let's just understand this here. 
Now we have the number two. So at the number two, we actually have two options. One, we can eat one orange, uh, so we will be left with one, or we can eat half the oranges. And in that case, we will also be left by one. And once we reach to one, so this is really important. Over here, we only have one option, which is to eat one apple. And on top of that, that's gonna end us with zero oranges. And once we reach zero oranges, that means we found a pattern. But just for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna co uh, complete these two as well. So at three, we can either eat one orange or we can eat a two n by three oranges, leaving us with one. And at two, we have the same options, one and one. So we actually found the answer, but how? And the answer to that is, the first time we come across a number zero is when we found the answer. So what is the path to that? And all we need to do is we need to draw a path starting from our root number, which in this case is 10. So from 10, we're going to go over here to nine. From nine, we're going to go down to three. From three, we're going to go to one. And from one, we're going to go to zero. So this over here is our most optimal path to eat the, um, to complete all of our oranges in the fastest order. So now this, uh, the question what it's asking for, it's not asking for the path, but instead it's asking for how many days. And to do that, that's actually really simple. So to count the number of days, we can just count the number of layers. So the layer in the beginning with the number 10 in this case is gonna be our zeroth layer. This over here is our first layer. This is our second layer. And think of each layer as each day. This is our third layer or third day. And this is our fourth layer. So the answer to this question, when we're given 10 oranges and these conditions over here, we can eat all of the oranges in four days, uh, given that we follow all the rules. So four days is the fastest we can eat all the oranges. And let's just go to our question real quick over here. Um, and as you can see, when n equals to 10, the output is four. So this is the solution that I came up with in the beginning. So I'm just gonna show you how we can do that in code. All right, so let's start off by initializing our queue and we can just uh, use an, uh, a list for that. But the problem with the list is the lookup time for a list is actually big O of N. And we can minimize that drastically by using the DQ from collections. So we're just gonna import that. So from collections, import DQ. So now we're gonna initialize our queue as that. So DQ, and we're gonna give it, so in the beginning, it's gonna have a value of n. So we need to give n inside of a list. So that's how our queue is gonna start. And now we're gonna count the number of days we have. And we're gonna start off at day zero. So now we're gonna go inside of a while loop, so while queue. And what we're gonna do in this while loop, the first thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna increase our days by one. So think of each iteration in our while loop as one layer or one level inside of the tree that we just drew. So, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate through all of our elements inside of our queue. Uh, so we're gonna iterate through everything. So uh, I'm just using an underscore because we're actually not gonna call any of this. So for underscore in range length of queue. So in the beginning, we're just gonna iterate through it once since we only have one element. But as you saw, the tree keeps getting bigger and bigger as we go down. Okay, so over here, what we're gonna do is we actually have four conditions. So the first is, if x is equal to one, then in that case, we're just gonna end up returning the number of days we have and we're done with our question. And the reason for that is, because when x has the value of one, that means that the next day is going to, uh, sorry, well, when x has a value of one, we can only eat one uh, orange, right? So we're gonna be done with it. So when you have one, you eat one of it and then you're done, so you reach the zero. So when it is equal to one, that means we're completely done. We've eaten all of the oranges. So now we have every other condition. So in here, we're first. We're, the first thing we need to do is we need to pop out the leftmost element. So whatever is at the zero with index. So to do that, I'm just gonna call x or let's just call it a node. And we're gonna do q dot pop left. So this is gonna get us whatever is at the uh, leftmost or the zero with index. And now we're gonna check this node for a few conditions. So if our node has a value of one, we know that we're done. So in this case, we're just gonna return the number of days we have. And why is it that when our node value is equal to one, uh, we're just gonna return the number of days? And the reason is when we have one orange left, 
the only thing we can do is eat that one orange and we'll be down to zero oranges. So it's pretty simple. Once you reach, uh, when you have only one orange left, you're going to end up eating that and you'll end up having zero oranges and you'll be done. So that's going to be the first condition we check for. So if node is equal to one, we're going to return the number of days. Okay. Now we have every other case. So if that is not the case, so if now we're going to check if it's divisible by three. And to do that, I'm going to be using the modulo function. And what this function does is it looks for the remainder. So if it's divisible by three, uh, node mod three is going to be equal to zero. And in that case, we're going to, so we're going to append that new value to our queue. So in this case, it's going to be node divided by three. And the reason we're dividing it by three, so this might be a little bit confusing, but I did explain it. So over here, it says we eat two n by three. So when you eat two n by three, the number of oranges you have left is going to be n by three. And what we care about is the number of oranges that are left. So this represents the number of oranges left and we're doing integer division. Okay, and now we're gonna check if it's divisible by two, so same thing. So if node uh, mod two is equal to zero, then q dot append node uh, divided by two. So again, integer division, same thing. And now we have one more condition. So in this condition, we're going to add the nodes value minus one to our q no matter what. So q dot append node minus one. So this is going to be our uh, for loop and we're gonna iterate through this until we end up returning our dates. And this should be our answer, but uh, this is actually not our complete answer, but it does work for most of the test cases. So I'm gonna run it through these test cases, 10, six, and one, and let's just add 15 and 20. So these are relatively smaller numbers. So I'm gonna run our code and as you can see, all of them work. We get the right answer. So if you wanna look at the my answer, so this is our answer and this is the expected answer, they match up, right? We get the same values. But now the problem is, now let's try submitting this code and I'll show you what happens. Okay, so here you go. So when we submit our code, we actually exceed the time limit. And we only exceed the time limit when we're given such massive numbers, right? So this number is what? Uh, 300, uh, 3 million, right? So it's a really big number. And when we get these big numbers, what end up, what ends up happening is like what I showed you earlier. So when we have smaller numbers, we only have few repetitions. But once you get bigger numbers like this, you're repeating the same call over and over again unnecessarily. So in order to do that, one simple fix is to store the values that we have visited in some sort of data structure. And you could use a list, but again, using a set would actually be more optimal in this case. And the reason for that is because uh, similar to a queue, a set also has a lookup time of big O of one, while a list has a lookup time of big O of n. So we're gonna initialize our set and I'm gonna call it visited. So this is gonna represent all of the nodes or specifically the values that we have visited. And it's gonna be an empty set in the beginning. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna append this value. So in this case, we had appended node uh, divided by three. And so we're also going to append it to our visited list. So over here, so we in three places, all we're gonna do is we're gonna do visited. So since it's a set, you actually use dot add, and we're gonna be adding the node. Okay, so over here, we're gonna be adding node divided by three. Over here, we're doing node divided by two. And over here, we're just doing node minus one. And now that we have this, we need to add one last and final con uh, condition. And before I do that, I just realized that I spelled visited incorrectly. So let me just change that. Okay, so now that we have that, what I'm gonna do over here is, so when we know that, so this actually checks whether it's divisible by three. And now the second thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna see whether this value, if node mod three is in our visited list. And if it, already is in our visited list, then we're not going to go inside of this if statement and we're not gonna append it to our queue. So we're gonna check if it's not, so not in visited. So only if it's not in our visited, we're gonna go inside of our if statement. And we're gonna similarly do this for, um, when we're checking for whether it's divisible by two, except that we change the three to two, that's it. And finally, when we go over here, we need to add a if condition. So we're gonna do if node minus one, not in visited, 
then only then are we going to add the value node minus one to the queue. So now that we have this, this should uh, take care of the extra time that it's taking and it should fix our problem. So now let's try submitting our solution. And as you can see, it got accepted pretty quickly. And finally, thanks a lot for watching guys and do let me know what you thought about the video. And don't forget to like and subscribe if this video helped you. Thank you.